welcome to another installment of HNN Overtime, the Hawaii News Now Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Chinen, joined as always in studio with the one and only Davis Pittner. Kyle, we're back. We're back. We're back at it. It's we're been back. a little it's while. It's been a little bit. But we're back at it. <laughs> it's been a minute since we were back here together talking a yeah. little bit of sports, but a lot of things going on. A lot of Pretty things. busy, but... We have to talk. We have to. We have to come well, on the hey, mic. But before all that, you know, I want to explain to you guys why it's taken us so long yeah. to do this. Yes, it's because Kyle's a freaking amazing no, sports reporter. No, no. He's been going nonstop. I don't think any of you guys realize how hard of a worker Kyle is. Oh my! He's goodness. been covering high school sports, UH sports, every single sport here in Hawaii, oh, nonstop man. Uh, for the past couple weeks. So big shout out to Kyle. Uh, you just been you've been killing it, dude. I've Man, been really, really I appreciate impressed. that. That's that. I didn't know that was happening, yeah. but <laughs> I I'm gonna give you your roses too, man. Don't 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 get it twisted, folks. <laughs> Davis Pittner works no, so hard at H and N for the digital team. He's a writer. He's an editor. He does all. So we have it's a lot of other of podcasts, right? <laughs> yeah. We have Lynn's podcast. We have all these other podcasts. He is like an executive producer slash editor slash director <laughs> of those. So he handles all of those. And this is like our little baby that, yeah, yeah. that, you know, he was on break for a little bit, but whenever we can get a chance to get in, we will. And I appreciate those kind words. Dude. And I have to say you are killing it Kyle, as we're well. just putting in the overtime dude. just putting in the we're just putting the in the h and n overtime why, that's what we came up with the title i mean <laughs> it's not just about sports it's not a clever sports name it's yeah. what we do <laughs> it's overall <laughs> it's overall <laughs> lifestyle is overtime lifestyle yeah, that's what i'm saying but you're right we have a lot of sports to to bring up we right. have a lot of things to break down a lot has happened in the mm-hmm. past couple weeks we have to it's the season finale for the rainbow warriors football team they're going on the road going to san jose state there's a lot of storylines in this yep. game more than i think a lot of games have this season you know you play sanos i mean you, you play you play fresno state there's a former player there but you play san diego state there's yep. another former player there a couple former players there you go in to san jose you got a trophy on the line and then you also have someone that you may remember a familiar name a name that hawaii fans have kind of dreaded hearing all season <laughs> They go up against Chevin Cordero. So yeah, Kyle, before we get into Chevin Cordero and all that, I, I think we should give a backstory kind of to this upcoming game because right. there's a special meaning to it. And I saw your story the other day and, uh, you know, Dick Tomey Trophy. Kind of explain that for people who don't Yeah, know. so the Dick Tomey Legacy Trophy was created in 2019 um, after the passing of Coach Dick Tomey. So if you guys don't know who Dick Tomey is and, you know, I know a lot of diehard UH fans will know that name. He was the coach. uh, He took the job in, I believe, 1977, and he coached there for a decade. And that's where kind of the identity of the Rainbow Warriors um, as a Division I, NCAA Division I school, kind of this is where it took shape. This is where the, the name Rainbow Warriors, this is where, you know, you really could see a transition into what we can consider like the golden age or the glory days of UH football, you know, way before Colt Brennan, before Mm -hmm. Timmy Chang, before, you know, the 2019 season and things like that um, with Rolo and them and and that success. This was kind of the first time they had come to national prominence. They had come to some sort of prominence in the NCAA Division I football game. And so he he coached there for 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 a decade. He coached at UH for a decade. Sixty three wins total. That's the third most by a head coach in UH wow. history. Um, then went on. He head coach. He he, he uh, was head coach at Arizona for for multiple years. And then he wrapped up his last head coaching gig was at San Jose State. Um, and so the t- connection between the two teams has kind of been there for a while, right? It, it, not just because they played in the same conference and things like that. You know, at, at one point, Dick Tomey was playing against Hawaii in the WAC, and it, it, it was just, you know, he had such a profound impact on both of these programs. Yeah. So, you know, when he, when he unfortunately passed away um, in his 80s um, in 2019, they created a trophy, um, the Dick Tomey Legacy Trophy, that these two teams will play for um, every time – they they face each other each year, um, and and it's just to honor his legacy, honor you know the 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 impact and the 
the things he did for each program. And I think it's just a really special. It's one of those unique things about college football, right? You know, in the NFL, you have your Super Bowls, you have your NFC Championship trophies. But in college football, these trophies, these rivalry trophies, they have yeah. a lot of meaning behind them. Um, so UH, you know, for Timmy and the boys, they're trying to get their second trophy game of the year. They just got one last uh, last week against UNLV. They got that Island Showdown trophy. Yep, that's you right. know, it was cool because we were both at the last one and we yep. saw UNLV riding, riding off the Golden Pineapple. <laughs> Last yeah. weekend, yeah, yeah. they sprinted 50 yards across the field to get to that thing. They took it back. That was really cool to see. So now they're looking for another trophy that has a little bit more significance to uh, the program. Yeah, you're right. I, I love seeing these trophies that have the special meanings. And after watching your package, uh, it was just cool to see how each coach, this is a special meaning to them. You know, they were talking right. about that backstory. They were talking about the significance of this mm -hmm. and, you know, how important it is to not only win the game, but to win the specific trophy to to honor that legacy. Right. And, you know, uh, Coach Coach Chang, he, he said some really good words, you know, as, as a former UH quarterback, when you're back on campus or when you're around the program, you run into these other guys, right? These mm -hmm. UH alums. So he, he always, sh you know, he shared a couple stories of words of wisdom that he that he was passed along when he was coming up in the coaching ranks and just the conversations he would have with coach Tommy. but then on the other side you have brent brennan who also fun fact he is the cousin of colt brennan so he was over at the wow. uh the uh the memorial here on the islands uh during the summer but coach brennan he was an assistant under co uh, under coach Tommy when he was uh the head coach of arizona i mean um of arizona and then no, not Arizona. Just San Jose State. My mm. bad. Yeah. He was an assistant under Tommy at uh, San Jose State, and you know he had he had been so connected in Coach Brennan's um, career and life that you know when he did take the job, he was still you know in his ear. He was still talking to him, and you know he shared a lot of good memories and a lot of fun stories um, and, and some profound stories about his time and his relationship with uh, Coach Tommy, and that was really cool to hear. Um, so just. Just the significance is across the board for each yeah. program. Oh, it definitely is. And uh, we're definitely excited. I think we should, you mentioned UNLV. I think we should take a step back even further before oh, yeah. we get to tomorrow. What a game. Seriously. So I, I, I came into this not really knowing who was going to win, going to be honest. I, I thought, you know, UNLV beat us last year. I knew this was kind of like a redemption game mm -hmm. in a way. Uh, and I honestly didn't expect us to win. <laughs> I, I didn't. I was nervous. The you know the first half. I mean, the first half, UH only had one touchdown. Yeah, it was it a was, it was a low scoring game for the first half, and it was just um, excuse me. I'm not choked <laughs> up. I just had a little bit of it's post, little post Thanksgiving, guys. I'm a little <laughs> bit a little bit of indigestion. It happens to everybody. We all had three plates of food last night. It's okay. And I have leftovers oh, for lunch 100%, today. 100% so agree. Yeah. Don't judge me. But, you know, <laughs> they 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 were, you know, defensively, it was a really good defensive game, but then at the same time you realize, you know, UH's offense again was kind of having that slow start that like they couldn't really get a roll until the second half when they did start connecting. They did get some some good um, completions. They they were moving the ball down the field. They got scores to the point where, you know, they were in this and they could stay in this. Also, I want to bring up the weather conditions, which was <laughs> horrible. I saw for you about, in a jacket, Kyle. For about 10 to 15 minutes in the third quarter, it was a monsoon. <laughs> it was so bad. I couldn't even... Like, it was, like, the biggest droplets of rain I, I've ever felt. And I was like, hey, Ben, hey, Jen, hey, Guy, like, let me just do the forecast tonight because I know what's going on right now. I'm in it. Do both. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was so bad <laughs> for about 15 minutes, and then the rain stopped for the yeah. rest of the night. Cause it was like off and on. Wow, I'm in. Yeah, that was that was a good <laughs> that was a good coverage by you. Yeah, for sure. Our uh, our uh, chief photographer Aaron Brooks. Shout out Brooks. He immediately texted me. I hope you have a rain cover on your camera. And I said, <laughs> of course I do. But it, I mean, it, it got a little bit. <laughs> Does moist. it really help? Yeah, yeah, I know. It, it, it got. I've been a in the same wet. situation. Yeah. I mean, you can't really do a lot in the, in the exactly. Rain. You exactly. try your best, but in in the end, your camera still gets wet. Yeah, like, exactly. So yeah, that was just a fun one to be at, you know, because y you see the first half score and you're just like, oh man, this is kind of a snoozer, right? This is kind mm -hmm. of a snooze fest, and and no no team was really showing flashes that they were gonna take this, even though UNLV had that slight lead at the half. Mm -hmm. But then 
you know, UH started to connect. They started to, you know, really get into a rhythm, and the defense was playing lights out. And, you know, they, they were able to keep them, you know, you know, they scored more points, and they kept them out of the end zone, kept them to field goals for most of the night. And, hey, solid win by UH. And it's one of those things where you're like, good, this is a stepping stone. This is momentum that they can take into next year because at this point, they're 3-9, and nine, yep. no bowl game in sight, winning record out of the ta- off the table. So it's just one of those – those little wins, right, that you can, like, say, hey, let's look back to the this game and hopefully San Jose game to where we can take that momentum into the offseason, yep. into the summer, and then into next season. Something to build off of, right? Exactly. It, it's still a growing we, – we said that at the beginning of the season, you know. This is – we. I don't think a lot of us expected, you know, that great. I mean, we're, we had new head coach, new mm-hmm. players, you know. Uh, this is a this is a work in progress, right? And I think a lot of people have high hopes for next season. Oh yeah, for this definitely. Um, big stats guy though. Once again, uh, here we go. I'm just gonna break down last game. I just want to say, uh, Shagger, perfect game, absolutely Solid game. perfect game. Uh, looking at the stats, 202 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions, and I I'm just really impressed by that. We we spoke at the beginning of the season how turnovers and interceptions was a big thing. Yeah. And you've seen throughout these past couple of games, uh, you know, him really growing, stepping up. Mm-hmm. And we're not seeing those turnovers really anymore. I mean, they've been really smart with the ball lately. And e- even in the games that they haven't won, they, they didn't play a lot of, you know, they didn't turn the ball over a lot on offense. And, and you know, it's just the, the maturation process, right, of, of a young quarterback. And, and I think we're, we're kind of seeing it in real time, which I think a lot of people – are encouraged to see but they were frustrated at the beginning of the year because he was making those young mistakes he was making those sophomore mistakes but you know over time he's just getting more and more confident more and more comfortable and and it showed on saturday yeah no i agree um and then looking at the stats again honestly you know unlv won the game stats wise right if you look at it uh 427 total yards uh having 369 uh what won us the game though in my opinion is Parsons our running game our I mean, running Diedrich, game was Diedrich nonstop. Is, Diedrich is kind of the workhorse yeah. him him coupled with Tylen Hines the freshman running back yep. they are a t- uh, a tandem that that can punish teams and and I think allowing them to go is helped by you know opening up the pass game and making yep. sure that defenses are on their heels cuz I mean I was watching it Tylen bust one um Diedrich bar, uh, bus one. You got other. You got your. You know your third back and um, um, Najee Bryant Lele. He also had a solid game. You know in the times that he was put in. So I think that running game can only yeah. be am- like amplified by a pass game that can start. You know moving the ball down the field, stretching these defenses yep. because, you know, you you saw they try to run the ball. But if you can't connect on a pass, a defense is going to load the box, load the um, you know. Make yeah. sure they can stop the run because they know they don't have to worry about the pass. Yeah. Which so, was an issue at the yeah. beginning of the year. We we couldn't really throw the ball, uh, you know, without throwing interceptions. So we re- relied on that running game. But then, you know, a team started figuring out, hey, these guys could only run, right. load the box, stop them, and that equals the losses. Exactly. So now that Shager's kind of getting into rhythm, limiting those turnovers, we're seeing the you, – you were right, the running game opening up. And to give right. everyone an idea, Parsons – 19 carries, 115 yards, one touchdown. Hines, nine carries for 63 yards. See, and so they they they're just a good twosome, and and you know Diedrich is a is a senior this year, so this is going to be his final game as a Rainbow Warrior. But Thailand has so much upside. Potential he has, is he there. He has so much upside, and he's a he's a shifty guy, but he can also like he's a very powerful runner too at mm-hmm. the same time. So I think you know just him learning under under Parson for for a year and also contributing during his freshman campaign is going to, you know, catapult him into the next couple of years here at UH and I think the sky's the limit, right? Yeah. No, absolutely. Um it, it was an amazing game. We pulled off the win and it was extra special because it was also senior night. Oh yeah, senior night was fun. It's always cool to see that. Kind of reminds me of my senior day. Just going to mention that, yeah, yeah. cuz I still remember my senior right? night. It it's a special moment to mm-hmm. be there, you know, your the fellow teammates there, younger teammates looking up to you. Uh, you know, I still remember my high school one. It was kind of a weird one for me because I was uh I was injured. I I tore my knee and uh tore my ACL, all the ligaments in it, and uh I was on crutches going down 
for senior night. All the players were lined up on the sides, and I was like just hobbling. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> hobbling my senior my senior senior day um, in uh, not senior senior day Jesus um, <laughs> in my college senior day um, I I had been um, done for the year halfway through um, with my thumb injury, so mm. I just had a cast on. I was just walking in in my jersey and street clothes, but. Yeah, I, I remember it very fondly. I remember high schools. Uh, that was really fun. But yeah, man, it's always good to see and you know, just 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 a celebration, especially after a win. You yeah. can celebrate the senior day. You can celebrate um, the win. There's a trophy. It was just so much fun that night. Um, but yeah, just great, great vibes. Yeah, um, super happy for the guys. Mm -hmm. uh, that was quite the game, quite the comeback, and. Uh, you know, after having all those losses, it's good to finally see one. Right. And, uh, you know, coming up tomorrow, hopefully we see another one, right? Yeah. Hopefully we get another trophy. Hopefully we get a dub. And it's going to be a tall task, I think, for this team, um, especially because the other guy that they know on that sideline has been rolling this Let's season. Let's break it down. Let's, Let's go. go. It's another edition of Pittner's printout <laughs> here. With Dude, the I'm stats. ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm going to come to you. All right. Here we go. 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 All right. UH. San Jose State. Yep. Uh, breaking it down, we're going to look at San Jose State. Lost to Utah State 35-31 last week. The tough uh, one. Close game, tough game for them. Looking at the numbers, uh, the main thing for this team is the passing. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing, and that is all because of our former UH star, Shevin Cordero. Uh Looking at the numbers, Utah State, Cordero, 257 yards, passing four touchdowns. Uh, and that that's all primarily to their star receiver right now, Elijah Cooks. Elijah Cooks has been – the connection between Cordero and Cooks has been um, just – just so good this year. They yeah. they've just been a, a great tandem. They worked very hard in the offseason to get that going because you know obviously Shevin coming in his yep. first season, it's, it's rare that you get that connection so early. But again, Cordero has been a tear for the Spartans. He has been their offense for the Spartans, and you know you talk about his passing game. He is also probably the best dual threat quarterback in the Mountain West. Yep. He can punish people on the ground with his speed, with his elusiveness. Um, I was just watching a couple highlights from the game they played against UNLV, and most of them, Cordero just, if he doesn't see an open guy, he's taking it. He's gone. Yeah. And he ran it in a couple times for a couple scores. So it's just, he's one of those one-two punch guys that, you know, we saw it. We saw glimpses of it at UH, and I think right now is probably prime Shevin Cordero. Yeah, I was just going to bring that up too. Also during the Utah State game, he had more carries more rushes than their own running back. Right. 16 carries for for 15 yards obviously. Not not too much, but that that just goes to show you that dual threat quarterback vibe which, you know, we've seen in the past has been kind of an issue mm -hmm. for UH. Um it's a deadly threat, right? Oh yeah. You know, it, it kind of reminds me like I guess this season he kind of reminds me of like a prime Marcus Mariota. I can see that. Right? I a dual threat guy yeah, yeah. that can really toss it very well, but then also you just can't you can't not have a spy on him yep. in case he runs it. I know that's a that's a weird comparison to make. Maybe some people be like, What are you talking about? <laughs> but like there's just some glimpses of like a prime Oregon Marcus Mariota, you know, just another St. Louis guy, yeah, you know, in college football, but like yeah, I think he's just had a, a, a hold of this offense the minute he stepped foot on campus, and he's just taken them to um, you know they they have a winning record right now, and they're they're in bowl contention, so they're they're gonna go to a bowl game at some point this year. Don't know where yet, but hey, could be the Hawaii Bowl. It could how, be the Hawaii how Bowl. How crazy would that be? How <laughs> that would crazy be, would that be if that would if be a Chef, crazy. Chef and, comes and back, comes back and plays at at Ching yeah. one more time for, oh, for the, the Hawaii memories. Bowl. That'd be <laughs> That'd be pretty pretty nuts, but yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting matchup, and again, let's talk about containing Shevin, because a lot of the guys on the defensive side have played Shevin in practice, and you know, I talked to, we talked to Shevin earlier in the week, and he was like, yeah, you know, we, I've played against him before, but in practice, they couldn't touch me, but now I know the defense wants to hit me, <laughs> so 
that that wow. that's that's Some that's fighting words are you that, like are yeah. you sure you want to say that before Th- that's, the game? that's hey that's that's them that's that's them and then it was so funny we were talking again on the uh side we were talking to defensive end andrew Troy, one of his closer buddies and he was like yeah man i'm gonna try and call him i'm gonna try and call him at like 12 a.m hawaii time when he's <laughs> when he's asleep um and you know the band you know the, the banter between friends that are gonna have to play each other, um, but yeah. So f- as far as the defensive goes, the defense has been stepping up game after game, um, yep. and I think they have a really solid plan. I mean, they're 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 pretty familiar with how this guy plays. So it's really about containing Shevin and keeping him in the pocket. So if you keep him in the pocket, he's gonna force him to pass, because in with his yep. legs is where it can where where it can hurt you. So if you can keep him inside, keep him contained, make him throw and then just have great coverage. I think that's just going to it's just going to be come down to that defense containing this offense and then on the flip side, you know, the San Jose State defense is nothing to, you know, call your mom call home about, right? Call mom about. So I <laughs> yeah. think if if this if this offense for UH is dialed in and they can they can hit up a good dose of Parson and a solid dose of the pass game from Shager. This is going to be an interesting one. It should be exciting, and I know a lot of the guys are going to want to play a little bit harder when they have to play against a guy that they spent a lot of time with. Yeah. No, Kyle, uh, I 100% agree with you. I think uh, I think something that you know we could kind of you know maybe potentially uh used to our advantage is in my opinion uh you know their kind of lack of rushing the ball right right? uh last game once again looking at the stats utah state san jose had 84 yards rushing right Hmm. which you know a lot of it was cordero right right but you know it it doesn't really seem like they have that big of a rushing game right Mm -hmm. they're relying a lot on him and his ability to throw the ball which is really good right i mean we've seen that in the past couple of games but it 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 kind of exploits them right Mm -hmm. you know we're able to kind of if we shut down the run we're able to cut to like cover more cover these receivers cover cooks and if we do that we're going to take away the pass you know Mm -hmm. they're gonna they're gonna have to switch it up or do something I think that's something that we can exploit definitely. Yeah, definitely, it's it's gonna be, yeah. I I just think you know there are, there are a lot of variables that Hawaii can take advantage of, but it's one of those things you have to show up, you have to play, right? Yep. And and we've seen we've taught we've had some episodes here where we make these talking points, yeah, and yeah. then something else happens. So yeah, it, it, it's 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 a toss up, but let's let's just hope for the best and you know make sure that I, I feel like they're just gonna have a really good game, especially because you know they wanna. They want to hit him. <laughs> they want to hit him. They want to hit, hit him. What can we say? <laughs> what, can, what, what can I say? They said it, not me, you know? So it's just going to be fun. And, and then obviously both sides, Shevin, and then all the players that we talked to at UAC are like, you know, we're, we're boys, but, you know, for that two hours, we're not. Then, you know, once the game is over, they're going to meet at, meet at midfield, hug it out, and just talk story. And that's yeah. that's what they're excited about. They're good. They're, they want to see their friend. They want to see one of their closest yeah. friends again. Who you know has been on the mainline all year, so that's what it's about. It, it, yeah, it really is just about that those relationships and those connections, and it, it's going to be a fun one on Saturday. Yeah, I agree. And that's what it's all about. I mean, that it on on the field, your enemies, right? right. You're you're going to hit each other. Once that game's over, final whistle blows. Uh, you know, your friends. You yeah, know? relive exactly. the memories. Exactly. So it's going to be interesting during that period, though. It definitely seems like they want to get after each other, have mm-hmm. some fun, mm-hmm. uh, which I'm excited about. But you, you interviewed Timmy. You interviewed the players. I interviewed a lot of people. Dude. You interviewed a lot of people. You were a busy yeah. guy. Once we, again, guys, oh Kyle Chaden, busy oh, sports dude. reporter. Oh no, busy no, no, sports no, no, reporter. No, no. But I, I say we took it to uh, some of those interviews. Oh yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I was kind of thinking about that earlier today. It's kind of, it is kind of like our bowl game, right? Um, but, you know, for these guys uh, and for these seniors, uh, it, it's it's their last go around. I mean, we, we talk about how, what our schedule is like through the week. Um, Tuesday and Wednesday are our, our grind days, and they're, they're days that we, we talk about this is the days that we win the game. This is the days that we, we go out there and we push our bodies through, and we know it's going to be rough. We run them before practice. We challenge them after practice. Today we challenge those guys. and, and um, you know, they, they go at it. And so we got one out of the books today on Tuesday. And now we'll have one more Wednesday. And, and, and that's, it's easy sailing down. Now it's just mental, body recovery, make sure they're hydrated. We, we prep for our travel. 
and uh, and then you go play that game Saturday at 12:30 in San Jose. I always remember Coach told me as a as a soft spoken guy that uh, you know he every time he every time I seen him he had a smile on his face. And uh, he's always giving me words of advice and words of encouragement. And so we miss him. And, and that, that trophy means a lot to both uh, both programs. You know, I had the San Jose State Co program with Coach Brandon and, and myself in Hawaii. And uh, and he had a special place in both our hearts. And uh, and, it, and it's it's a unique trophy, but it's it's a great honor to, to bring something home. And we'll, we'll try to go after that thing and try to win it. I was just on the phone with him last night. You know, got to talk my trash, got to get in his head. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him again later. I'm going to keep poking, pestering him, keep poking him, make sure. Make sure my uh, image and stuff is in, engraved in his head, so when I see him on the field, I really get after him. So I'm just really excited. Um, it's, it is gonna be weird. He's one of my closest friends, but um, I know once once I step on the field, he's not my friend. He's my enemy. I'll be at him every day, nonstop. I'll call him 12 a.m. Hawaii time. He's gonna be dead asleep. I'll call him in the morning. I'm, I'm gonna wake him up. I'm gonna get in his head. I'm gonna I'm gonna really get after him this game. It's my goal. I'm excited, but you know, ne nervous, a little sad, you know. I'm used to taking the field with him, but, you know, it's the first time in a long time we'll go against each other. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it, looking forward to seeing him and, you know, friends off, to, friends, you know, before the game and then, you know, on the field, it's going to have to just, you know, be. Uh, before I used to, I mean, play against them, but during practice, uh, they couldn't touch me. Uh, but now, I mean, now they're, now I know the defense is, um, would love to hit me. So it's going to be weird. Um, but I mean, it's gonna be fun. Um, it's gonna be fun playing against them. Um, I mean, they're my boys. But I mean, during the game, uh, we're not gonna be boys. But I mean, after, I mean, we're gonna hug it out. Uh, I mean, they're my brothers for life still. Uh, he's been trying to call me all week, trying to get in my head. But I mean, he knows that doesn't work. But uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I spent four years over there. Um, the class that I came in with. Um, uh, the players from Hawaii. Uh, just that bond that we created, I mean, will never be broken. Um, I mean, and they knew why why I transferred. Uh, there was no hate to, I mean, why I did that, and they know the real reason. So, I mean, uh, I mean, we still have that bond, and, I mean, they're still my brothers. Uh, I mean, I fought, I fought with them for four years. I mean, it was a grind. Uh, we went through hard times, and, um, I mean, now um, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. They're happy. I'm happy. And, um. Yeah, I just can't wait to uh, see them. Uh, can't wait to battle against them um, for the first time. And uh, I mean, it's going to be a good one. A fond memory or or something that will stick with you as far as, you know, your relationship with Coach Tomey. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, yeah, Coach Tomey was just a really, really special guy to us. Um, obviously, had an, you know, one of those unique people, right, that just kind of had this tremendous impact everywhere he went, right, whether that was in Hawaii when he was – coaching there or when he was at Arizona, when he was coaching there, or when he was at San Jose state, um, you know, my, my path crossed with him. Um, you know, I played against his teams when I was a player, although I didn't play very much cause I wasn't very good, but, um, you know, just his teams were always so tough and played so hard. And he was the an incredibly impactful influence on me and how I coach and what I think is important and it's all about the people and it's all about the family or the ohana or the familia or whatever that is at your place but it that's a special thing and that's how we're built here and um and i owe that all to coach tomy and i have lots of funny stories about coach tomy um i'm not even sure where i should start when i was a young coach he cussed me out many many times and i'm sure i'm not the only only young coach that can relate to that um but, you know, when I got hired here, you know, he was someone that I, I talked to weekly. So there you have it. That's a look from the coaches, from the players. Uh, Kyle, it's going to be a good game. Oh, it's going to be a great game. And, you know, both both parties are excited. I'm excited to watch it. Yep. You know, it's, it's kind of convenient because it's like 1030 Hawaii time. So it's a day game. <laughs> it's really going to be it's going to be nice. Something to wake up to drink my coffee with and and enjoy a good football game. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm excited to see this matchup. It's it's kind of like the perfect way to, to end a season. Right. I mean, you you have both of these teams that are both really good teams. They have mm -hmm. potential on each side. 
then you also have this Hawaii ties, right? right. Oh yeah, uh, which makes it even better. You get to see Shevin again, uh, relive the past. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then and for those UH guys, you know, it wasn't the season record wise that they were hoping for, but you know they're treating like they like we they said in the interview they're treating this like their bowl game because I mean. That actually kind of works yeah. out because there is a trophy at stake. There is a trophy, But, yeah. you know, they're treating this like their bowl game, their last go-around for the seniors, and they want to just finish the year on a high note for Timmy's first year. How many plates did he have yesterday? Oh, man, Thanksgiving. Yeah, we got to look, look at the numbers. The Thanksgiving right? stats. Numbers of Thanksgiving. What, what do we got? So I actually worked yesterday during the yeah. day. So Team my, player right there. So my first plate was a uh, one of those zippies like turkey plates. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Shout out to shout out to work for giving getting us some lunch today uh, <laughs> yesterday. I really appreciate it. it. Was really good actually. It was really good. So I had one of those. It was like turkey, like the zippy stuffing, some rice, okay. corn. You can't go um, wrong with some zippies. ham. Yeah, you can't really. You can't, you can't go really go wrong. wrong. With zippies. Um. So had that. Um. And then I was. I, I walked over and got some pies from Hawaiian Pie Co. Okay. Um, and you know we had pies and 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 then our other coworker Megan from the web team she brought pies. So it was like four pies during work. So yeah, I had about yeah. four pieces of pie. Wow. Um, finished work, went and, went and saw my family, and then I had two more plates of that and then more pie. So if we're t- if we're keeping count, that's three plates of food and about six pieces of pie. Yeah. Yeah. Yourself? That's a lot. All right. So no, this, is, this is this is a little. Hey, I hope people like don't judge me on this. Uh, so Thanksgiving lunch at my grandma's house. There you right? go. Right, close family. Uh, we had the turkey. Mm-hmm. We had we had mm-hmm. the potatoes. We oh, yeah. we had uh, stuffing. We mm-hmm. we we had everything. Uh, safe to say, I had three plates of that. There you go. Right. Uh, we had dessert on mm-hmm. the side. A mm-hmm. uh, little little bit of pie. Um couple hours to digest that yeah right yeah and then second thanksgiving dinner there you go uh at my girlfriend's cousin's family's nice gathering nice uh, we're talking about more turkey yep we're talking about more steak mm-hmm. talking about stuffing there you go uh, green peas you know it, it, everything and above and then some more dessert on the side there some you delicious go. there you go banana cream pie oh that's the best um, not a big pumpkin guy, if I'm going to be honest. Not with a you. big pumpkin Not guy. Not a big pumpkin. Interesting. Okay, so like, Kyle. I only really eat pumpkin pie during Christmas and Thanksgiving. I'm not a big wow. pumpkin guy throughout the year. Only seasonal. That's interesting. But like, I'm, it, I'm kind of the same way. Right. You, know, you never really go to the store specifically to get right. it. Right. Exactly. It's not like out there for show or whatever. It's you know part of the holiday. Exactly. Um, I'm right there with you. And okay. But. Also, what 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 is your your top thanksgiving side i know this was this has been a hotly debated topic on the internet <laughs> i need to know because mine is stuffing it has always been stuffing it will always be stuffing and a little bit of cranberry sauce i'm Whoa. a big i'm a cranberry oh, sauce guy if you if you watched our our tiktok you would already know my side i did i forgot you would already I know forgot. my side I didn't mean to say it that loud. Like, if you guys didn't know, okay, it's mashed potatoes, right? Oh, it's no. mashed potatoes. Oh, um, no. When we did that TikTok in the newsroom, uh, I I didn't know it was all of a sudden going to get really quiet. And so, <laughs> I, like, I have a big voice. Like, I was, you know, I was going to say it out loud. So I just said, you know, mashed potatoes. Oh, and no. So everyone looked in my direction and... Uh, so yeah, Kyle, it's my favorite side is mashed potatoes. <laughs> I mean, I think just uh, uh, that's one of the. It's like okay, for Thanksgiving sides are usually all just starch and yeah. carbs, but like mine has to be the stuffing or the yams or sweet potatoes. One of those. Yeah, I, I've I've always been a kid, like since I was a kid. Mm-hmm. If I don't have any mashed potatoes on the plate, I don't mind. Okay, I'll fill it up with stuffing. And and Big sweet potatoes. I actually guy. really love sweet potatoes. Okay. Um, and then I went to for so in college I would go to Thanksgiving with to my auntie's house. She lives in um, St. Louis. Yeah. And so that side of the family, they have like sweet potato pie, sweet potato casserole. I I fell in love with sweet potatoes, dude. Wow. And and like Pretty pecan good. pecan pie or pecan pie. Ooh, I love that. So good. It's yeah, like uh, some agree. of these things that like are traditional Thanksgiving stuff that not necessarily you get here in Hawaii just because you know we have it's it's Hawaii. Yeah, yeah and, obviously. Yeah. So, and then obviously no rice on the mainland. But 
Yeah, stuffing. You know, mashed okay. potato, like garlic mash or like. Dude, just all of the above. Just all of the above. <laughs> just give me some mashed potatoes, pour gravy on top, okay. mix it in with the turkey. Okay. okay. Uh, you know, a little, little turkey and then a little mash. I, 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 I had so much for lunch. I, I went to my girlfriend's house, completely passed out. Of I passed course. out for of an course. hour. Of course. Uh, I had that food coma, and then all of a sudden I woke up, and they're like, all right, we're heading to the next one. I'm like, oh, God. See? Right, I got to get got to get mentally prepared. It's it's a grind. Yeah. It's a you grind. You know, us bigger guys, too. I mean, like, yeah. former former offensive linemen, they expect us to eat a lot. Oh, yeah. Um. So, my, my – okay, so my, my dad and my grandparents on my dad's side and my brother, they're actually in St. Louis to go see my aunt. For okay. Thanksgiving, so this year was really just my grandparents on my mom's side and my mom. Um, we're we're over there, and you know they're you know my, it's my mom. She doesn't need that much. Yeah, yeah. And it's my grandparents who are older folk, and they had a whole turkey, and they're just yeah. like, "It's all on you, my boy." Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, "Oh no." Same way. Oh no. Dude, same way. So like, yeah, I had two plates, but it was like, it was platters. massive. Right? It was massive, yeah. right? Oh man, and then they always they always like look when if you're at a bigger party, right? And they have yep. like, okay, food lines open, go ahead. They always stare at us, right? To yeah. go first, and we're just like, I don't I don't want to be that guy. Yep. I mean, it, it, that's that's just the the tr- the, the struggles we yep. go through um, on a daily <laughs> as basis <bigger. laughs> as bigger guys. But, that's what I'm saying. Oh yeah. man, it was a great Thanksgiving though. It was. Got, good 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 to see some family. Good to good to. You know, spend yep. some of it with with my work family during the day, but I think with go. that, that, let's finish it off. It's a solid episode. Solid. Happy belated Thanksgiving. Happy Black Friday. Yep. Happy Saturday. Happy whatever. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. Thank you so <laughs> much for listening and watching this episode of H and N Overtime. To listen to the rest of the catalog of H and N Overtime episodes, you can hit the Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get the rest of our H and N podcast. For the video version, you can head to the Hawaii News Now. YouTube channel. I'm Kyle Chenin. That's Davis Pittner. Thank you so much. Aloha.